listen to Comedy Bang Bang without ads and get access to our older episodes, all of the older episodes that are so classic. Well, there's, I'm sorry, there's just no way to do that. Ah, uh, except by signing up for Stitcher Premium. That's right. Just go to stitcherpremium.com or the premium tab in your Stitcher app and sign up with the promo code CBB to get a free month of premium listening. You get ad-free listening to Comedy Bang Bang, all your favorite Earwolf and Stitcher shows, plus our full episode archive and your premium subscription helps support us and the show directly too. That's stitcherpremium.com, promo code CBB for a free month of Stitcher Premium. Thanks! They say you can't throw your granny off a bus, but just you fucking watch me, Grandpa. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. <laughs> Thank you to Tough Shit Elliot for that wonderful catchphrase submission. And welcome to Comedy Bang Bang for another edition. We are, oh, so deep in the throes of Augie Doggy. Uh, Augie Doggy 2020, a year to remember, certainly. And uh, what a wonderful show we have. By the way, my name is Scott Ackerman. I'm the host of Comedy Bang Bang. And uh, this, of course, is uh, used to be America's podcast. Now it's Humanities Podcast because I realized that was too limiting. I, I want a global audience, if not uh, 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 gal galaxial? Galactic. Is gal galactic. I think galaxial sounds a little more impressive. Coaxial. Coaxial, a yes. A coaxial. <laughs> coaxial cable audience. Wait, that's what I used to have on <laughs> IFC. Um, we have a great show. Uh, the guy that uh, was just talking, we're going to be talking to him in a second. So uh, if that hasn't hooked you, I don't know what will. Um, coming up a little later, we have uh, a marketer and we also have a vegetarian on the show. I, uh, I, I enjoy this show because I like talking to people of all walks of life, uh, hearing about their, uh, their various, uh, likes and dislikes. And apparently, uh, the vegetarian likes vegetables and dislikes meat. Um, but uh, I, I'm sure there will be more to it than that. Um, but before we get to them, we want to welcome our first guest. Now, he's been on the show many times before. And when I say many times, what are we talking to? I think, yeah, <laughs> I'll go to. <laughs> And but I've also been the 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 live audience the 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 live action extravaganza comedy bang bang. A few That's times. right. Yes, you you were on that many many times playing one of our Pat uh, Dantrick. Pat Dantrick, <laughs> <laughs> one of our what what was the, your what sports circumference? Sports circumference. Yes, sports circumference. I still yes. think we need to do a spinoff. No pun, maybe pun intended of sports circumference. What what would be the pun? Because spin, maybe spin? oh, I think his spin, yeah, maybe spin had to do with circumference. Or off? Is that what you were thinking? <laughs> spin, <of>? Yeah. <laughs> oh, circumference. Maybe I intended spin? a pun that wasn't there. Maybe it was an ill-intended pun. Yeah, yeah. You, you should you should get used to saying pun not even there. Yeah. Pun. <laughs> um, but he is uh, uh, he's currently, and when I say currently, he got in uh, just over the wire. Uh, a good three months after the uh, final episode uh, of uh, not final final, but uh, of the season of uh, his HBO show Avenue five here, just in time to promote. <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> well, everyone has all the time in the world, so you might as well, you know, everyone's finished normal people and Tiger King and everything else. So if you haven't done uh, uh, Avenue, if five, you haven't done Avenue well five, do get to it. Yeah, yeah. Why not? This is a great time to promote something. You're right. And not only that, but we love having him on. He's, uh, uh, been on for many, many years here. Please welcome back to the show. Kyle Bornheimer. Hello. Hi. So nice to be here. So nice to see. Uh, oh, I was going to say see you because I thought that you were going to say so nice to see you. And I was going to say so nice to see you. No, I didn't say you that. Switched so it up at the end. Yeah, so I'm nice to be didn't. here. Cause that would have been awkward yeah. if I was a yeah. B and you were a C. Sounds like, uh, <laughs> Trying to make a joke a about song? cool up, but uh, <laughs> if I were a B <laughs> and you were a C, C. <laughs> Avenue Five, of course, is uh, a, a television program. Uh, tell us everything about it. Everything about from, it, from soup to nuts. It sprung from the uh, satirical genius of uh, Armando Iannucci from Veep fame and In the Loop and and uh, Death of Stalin. And Does he play the Veep? He does not play the Veep. He is not the Veep. Yeah, hmm. uh, he I, I, he might have been. Uh, he might have been the 
what was what was that show about the guy that like re- has revenge does revenge in the 80s the, the show about the guy who does oh wait we're talking the equalizer, the equalizer. it's so weird I, Armando was the equalizer no um but it sprung now from, that would be something that would be amazing he could he could, the guy can do anything so i wouldn't be surprised if he, if he could do that and he um he concocted this amazing comedy set on a space cruise where a a space cruise set about 30 40 years in the future gets knocked off course and and gets stranded and my particular character is um about to get a divorce from uh my spouse played by Jessica St. Clair. Jessica St. Clair who uh we we've heard of she's never been on the show but uh a good friend good friend that I that I talk to occasionally. Yes. yes. What's her? Uh, what's her? Who, who who does Jessica know very well? Marissa is it Marissa Wampler? Is Marissa that, Wampler, yes. yeah. She's she's like an aunt of Marissa. Yeah, Wampler, yeah. They're, yeah. <laughs> the godmother of Mar- Marissa. Yeah. Um. So we are a squ- uh, a, a bickering couple who was just was very excited to get off this cruise because we were going to end our marriage and now we might be stuck up there forever with each other and uh, we are just two of the 12 or 14 uh, of the ensemble that Armando has put together. Hugh Laurie and. And Josh Gad and uh, Lenora Critchlow. He played that guy. Uh, he played that guy House. That Hugh. Laurie he was guy. the House. He was the House. Yeah. Now, if he were to do a Yo Mama joke, or if there were a Yo Mama joke about him, like you're so fat when your mama sits around the house, she sits around you. Right. Would that be it? Or it would be thirty percent more British dry wit. Mm. Brilliant. Like he. Yeah. He's. He's. He is that guy. And they all. I mean, it's amazing because I spent five, four or five months in London filming that. And there's a base level of wit in that country that is it, it, like their their cheesy sitcom is like a really sharp sitcom set in Shakespearean times. It's like Shakespeare is just like this oafish dad that comes home like and it's and is it's it called there. shake and bake because <laughs> he has bake. to make dinner. <laughs> It's that would be a concept, and somehow it would be really high, you know, highbrow. Do you have you ever have you ever considered that maybe you think English people are smart because you're so dumb? I do, yes, but you know, I, yeah, I say yeah because I've said that about people from Utah, people from yeah, you say about every single I, person I that you've ever met. <laughs> so yes, I should always preface when I compliment anyone <laughs> that this is my standards, which are generally low on all categories. <laughs> Now, Kyle, I'm going to ask you: Are you? Are you? It, it seems to me like you're slumping in your chair. Is that is that correct? I, well, it, I'm yeah, which I'm not happy with. I'm trying, you know, <laughs> because the energy. It seems like you are just getting lower and lower in frame, where it's just going to be like your well, how eyeballs. Many, at a how many point. chins are you seeing right now? That's how you can. I'm tell seeing about uh, eight or so. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. If you're seeing eight chins, then I'm about as slouched as I can be. <laughs> are you offended? Does it seem like I'm not interested? I, you know, I I put a lot of thought into this this. This you, you decided to slouch so much is that <laughs> like what what would be wrong if you like sat up and actually brought the mic close to you well okay i can, I can definitely bring the mic closer is that better well, no 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 we don't want it that close okay. but i'm just saying like i don't i don't want the mic to be closer to you as much as i want like you just to be like up and and excited to be here well like, i am excited on? you know what the thought was i thought if i was on a, I was going to bring in just like this regular wooden chair and then I thought you'd be like, Kyle, you look so uncomfortable. <laughs> I so, would prefer that to just snoozeville here when you're talking about <laughs> Avenue 5. Hey, if I can make you lean in, uh, it's really, it's a power move, really. It's like, you know, what, what do they, what do they say? Like some assholes that like have yeah. their seat higher during meetings. This is a power move on my part to make you. Yeah, lean it's a power move. Yeah. yeah. You know me, old power move okay. Bornheimer. Well, speaking of power moves, you uh, have power moved through the industry this year. You are in uh, not only Avenue 5, but you're in a, a movie called The Lovebirds, which is on Netflix uh, with uh, our old friend Kamel Nanjiani who's in that, Nisa Ray. And uh, you play as I, mean, I watch this movie. It's fantastic. And you play. Uh, 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 you're going to have to remind me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's 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 sprung from the mind of Armando Iannucci. Oh wait, no. Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> so yeah, I play a, I play a very corrupt uh, politician preacher type of character. Wait, you're and, a politician and a preacher? Like I I saw it. When did it come out? It came out a month and a half ago. It was about. It was sort of towards the beginning. You know, it was it was one of those sort of victims of COVID uh, in terms of release. They they had a, a relatively big theatrical release planned and we were actually headed to south by southwest for the oh premiere boy, and all here that. comes the slump yeah <laughs> <I'm> just, uh, <laughs> all and, uh, i did was ask you a simple question 
<laughs> when did it come out? My, you're, you're monologuing about it. I have a tendency, my, my wife um, calls them Bornhammer bummers. I, I like to, <laughs> to really bring in like a, you know, we're all having fun, but I didn't like just to lay out like the reality of a situation or just like get real. Like, hey guys, we're having fun now, but you know, there's a lot you know, of tornadoes the, the in this area. To this. <laughs> yes. It's a Bornheimer bummer. Um, so but, anyway. Well, what I was going to say is, is it came out a little while ago. And I don't remember the politician part. I don't remember the, the preacher part. You know, that might have been on the page, but not in the cut. In, in the cut, we're oh, just okay. a, a sort of um, seemingly put together nice uh, couple. I don't want to say too much. Um, sure. That ends up doing a very. You don't want to spoil this movie that came out. I was <laughs> months ago. <laughs> After you watch Avenue Five, uh, <laughs> you can watch this, and I won't give any spoilers. No, I um yeah, so I do some nefarious business with all with a smile. Um, I'll, but there's ironically, and we filmed this geez, a year ago. Year and a half ago, um, there's I'm, I'm in a mask much of the time. Wait, I, I don't even remember you being in a mask unless it was a Kyle Bornheimer mask. No, <laughs> I'm in. Um, I'm almost I'm almost exclusively in a mask in it. Um, it's you know I'm, I don't I play, remember that. I remember Kumail. Yeah. I remember Issa. They're so funny together. Great chemistry. Incredible plot. Just like a laugh a minute. And great action in it too. And then, like when it comes to your part, it, like all I'm getting is like like a fuzzy, almost like you didn't sign a release, and they had to fuzz out your. <laughs> That's how all my yeah, all my movies. My are, memory are. is just a blank when it comes to your character. What? You, refresh my memory. I think that's a good thing. I think I think that's what an actor goes for. You really want to bleed into the story so much you're not remembered. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember you came on. I was like, "There's my guy." There's my guy. You and know, then- I've talked about it on the show many times. Big fan of you. I uh, love all your performances before we even got to know each other. Uh, just a big, big fan. And so as soon as you came out, I was like, there's my guy. And now two months later, I'm like, what did he do? <laughs> <laughs> that might, maybe it was because I was in a mask the whole time. And maybe and, uh, you forgot. It's a pretty dirty. It was fun. We, we it was shot a that dirty mask. Orleans. It was a dirty mask because it's part of a dirty storyline. I'm walking around the spoiler. You are, I don't. Wait, wait, come on. Just spoil it because I, well, I do I'm part not of a cult. This. I'm part of a cult. Oh, yeah. 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 And yeah, 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 we, yeah, yeah. We we um, we are in a ceremony, like an eyes wide shut. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 And um, and even even right. Before that, right. 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 This is the best way, like like a talk show, like a host that knows like how to help a guest, and you're just very unsu- yeah, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, just, yeah, 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 shut up, shut up, you're shut getting up, shut boring up. again. <laughs> That's the style of the show. I don't know why anyone comes on this show. No, I don't why, know why, why even do like a nuanced like, oh, you know what? He'll always help you through. He'll, you know, he he's got a great touch in helping you through. No, he <laughs> nope. just says, oh, you boring, go, you basic, go. <laughs> Um, no, I do remember this now. I, I, I guess I was thinking, weren't you in a, in an apartment scene? Didn't you like break into an apartment or am I thinking of someone else? There, there's a few apartment. Br- no, there. <laughs> the Lovebirds fans, by the way, are going crazy right now. They're, sh- they're screaming at their, at their speakers like, no, he comes in in scene 43. He's not in the apartment. He, yeah, I am in an apart. I am in a room with them that where it's not a break in situation. They break into an apartment. They break and in, someone- but you come in, right? No, That's there is I'm someone in there already. God, Less again. chins than me. Much younger and much fewer chins than me. All right. Enough about the lovebirds. Uh, one <laughs> other question, though, I do want to ask you about it is uh, uh, where were you on the call sheet? Oh, on that one? Yeah, on that one. Like um, you, don't, you don't need to say on that one like, oh, I'm number one on other ones. Oh No, actually, you're right. I'm one. always seven. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you. That's that's part of my deal. No matter, even if I'm the, have the most lines, I'm always number seven. seven. I love that. I actually think I think that would be cool to like contractually put that into your into your thing. One thing they're talking about is actually not doing numbered um, call really? sheets anymore. Yeah. What did this? What? Yeah. Comedy Bang Bang fans will be livid about this. This they live for the call sheets. Really? Why are they talking about this? I I think it has to do with. Just sort of onset behavior and just sort of creating a, a better atmosphere on and like an easier. So there's no hierarchy. Like, That's I. Yeah. When I was in Comedy Bang Bang, that was the only reason I did it is for the hierarchy. What number was I on that? Oh, as uh, but what as were you? Tan, pan, as Tan Patrick, tan, as, tan, as, tan, as, as Dan, as Pat Dantrick. <laughs> Pat Dantrick. <laughs> I don't know. You probably once we assigned it to you. Uh, that was probably what, what was that? That was the second season or the third season, and then you came back like almost every season. I think so. I'd have been like eighty-eight. Yeah, you probably would have been eighty-eight, and then you yeah. keep being eighty-eight the entire time. Yeah, a, a Bornheimer eighty-eight. 
Although yeah. I think you redo it every season. Oh God, now I'm Bordheimering this story. <laughs> Bordheimer. <laughs> it's it's amazing. I can't like like I'm, I'm boring my family. I'm you like, are I'm almost asleep friends. right now. Look at you. <laughs> you are le- you have leaned so far. I knew, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna bring one of these. Here, there's a there's a there's a like a fighter jacket in here. I'm gonna bring up um, Avenue Five out now. People can watch all of them. Are have you have you filmed the second season yet? No, we're 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 all sort of hoping to come back uh, maybe sooner than we thought for to start season two. If not, we would start, you know, in a few months, but we were supposed to be there now. Um, want me to get boring again? Uh, I can tell you all <laughs> well, about you're, how you're, I was. You're, you're like <laughs> turning late. into the depressing, the bummers now. You were like, supposed to be here now, but uh, well, obviously that didn't work with 170,000 people dead. So it'll probably be like a few months. <laughs> so yes, we are very excited about season two and it should start up pretty soon. Fantastic. Well, you know, I mean, uh, not everyone has seen season one, so go ahead and catch up on that. And uh, The Lovebirds, where you can, uh, apparently he's in a room with uh, the uh, number one and number two on the call sheet uh, at some point. And uh, he didn't break into the room, but they broke into the room and someone else is also in that room. So that's, the, uh, that's this. That's what it says on IMDb for the summary of that movie. <laughs> put that in the trivia. If any of you <laughs> IMDb heads are in there, go ahead and put that in the trivia. But we have to get to our next guest, if that's all right, Kyle. Now, this is exciting. Have you uh, eaten many vegetables in your life? A few times, yeah. What? Uh, which ones have you eaten, would you say? I had um, the green broccoli ones, and I yeah, had yeah. a piece of cauliflower. One piece of cauliflower mm-hmm. and then uh, some broccoli. At, at a whole meal of broccoli. I think I had a, a. I went to a broccoli restaurant. He is, of course, I mentioned it, a vegetarian. Please welcome to the show, Jerome Bucket Hat. That's Jerome Bucket Hat. I'm sorry, but Jerome. Jerome with an N. Oh, with an N. Okay, and then Bucket Hat. Bucket Hat. Yes. Buck Bucket Hat. It's a okay. common. It's a common misconception. I'm sorry. It's spelled bucket hat, it's but bucket you're right. Hat. If you look at it a different way, it's buck bucket that. Yes, bucket that. Jerome. Jerome. So Jerome. nice to meet you. So nice to meet you as well. And this is Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Jerome. Thanks for having me. I'm a vegetarian. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, do you have expertise in vegetables? I do or? not. I I do not. Okay. I'm just you just a eat them. You yeah. don't uh, know that much about them, other than hey, you know, get into my belly. Is, I eat them. Uh, 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 a uh, fat bastard once said, right? Fat bastard once said that, and I've never let it down because I, 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 I've never let it let it live. I never lived it down. Is that the word? I've never lived. You it never down. let it down. You never let it live, or you never lived it down. I'm not quite live sure. Live and let which, die. Uh, Living exactly. Yeah. I just decided one day. You know what? I'm going to be a vegetarian. That's usually how it happens. I mean, a lot of people. Uh, I, I guess there aren't too many people who have it thrust upon them. Uh, as much as usually someone decides, uh, you know what, I'm going to be a vegetarian, and then they just become it. It was not thrust upon me at all. In fact, everybody despi- every, everybody discouraged it. They despised me for it. You they, know? Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, so uh, is, is that because your friends are all big meat eaters? Huge or? meat eaters. Hmm. They're called the meatheads. <laughs> Wait, all your friends are called the meatheads? Yes, there's a group. There's a group that I was in that I'm still so in you, currently. So you befriended this group group of people and what you had in common was this group you were in called the meatheads yes and then you started just eating vegetables but you still decided to be a meathead yes and by the way being a vegetarian doesn't mean we just eat vegetables oh, we just okay. don't eat meat oh i see you know they should call it a don't meatitarian right kyle i mean definitely thank you thanks for co-signing that yeah <laughs> really appreciate it go back to sleep <laughs> <laughs> the don't meet a Terry. Don't eat meat a Terry. And see, that's the way that's what we need is I say something you build on it. <laughs> that's yes. Ending, right? Yeah, I, I believe so. So, Jerome, uh, uh, you, what do you eat? Potatoes? I, I eat uh, potatoes. I eat okay. tomatoes. I eat tomatoes are fruits. Are they not? They are. They are fruit. And a lot of people don't know that. And a lot of people don't respect tomatoes as a fruit. And they get labeled as a vegetable. They get misgendered as a vegetable. Well, because they taste so bad, they don't taste like fruits. You know what I mean? Like fruits are all good, you know, like, like, you know, strawberry, watermelon, pineapple, orange, apple, like th- these is good. These is good. Tell us about being a vegetarian. Is that, uh, it must be a hard lifestyle. You say that your friends don't like you for it, even though it seems like your friendship has transcended the group that you're in. It's very hard. And frankly, I should be respected more for it, which is why I appreciate you giving me this platform. 
Well, that, uh, this is your time. This is your platform to say anything you want to about being a vegetarian. So uh, please take it because okay. uh, I, you know, quite honestly, I don't know if I have any more questions to ask you about being a vegetarian. <laughs> I mean, you don't eat meat. You eat some fruit. You had a potato once like uh, I'm tapped dry. So go ahead. Say okay. whatever you want to say. First of all, I'd like to say a few things. If you are not voting for Kanye West this election, what? you do not get to speak to me about <laughs> being a vegetarian. You do not get to speak to me about wearing uh, the clothes that I wear, about wearing the shoes that I wear. Well, okay, hold on. Hold on one second. What? Hold on one second. Kyle, I don't know whether uh, you seem very confused by this, but... Uh, uh, I, I I had you on as a vegetarian, not necessarily yes, a I'm still a Kanye vegetarian. West enthusiast. I'm still a vegetarian. I'm still I still don't eat meat. I, I yeah, but I you know when I had Kyle, you on, wake I up. That, <laughs> no, no, I'm 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 uh, slouching out of fear. <laughs> out of fear, but uh, uh, yeah, I I don't I don't I didn't necessarily think this was going to get political and was such a shall we say off center point of view about politics i'm here to talk about vegetarian food okay a lot of people get protein from lentils also okay. if you're not voting for kanye west fuck off <laughs> <laughs> no it seems to me like and if i if i may critique you uh Please. and and perhaps sometimes we need a mirror to be held up to our actions in order to truly see what they are and let me be your mirror okay um we look just alike <laughs> we certainly do um but it, it seems to me like you start talking about vegetarianism and then you ever so quickly make a hard, hard right turn into voting for Kanye West out of what seems to be a protest vote. I don't know if I'm doing that every time. I think what I'm doing is try to do it here. without doing it. OK, sure. OK, well, it, it, Scott, can I be a th second mirror to like, can I Please, be next? Yeah, sometimes we need two mirrors because yeah. have you ever been in that dressing room where there's just one full length mirror and then you're like yeah. yeah but how do i look in the back you kind of need to have two mirrors in order to when you're cutting your own hair you need two mirrors you definitely need two mirrors. and kyle you and i look just alike from the back i right. see that ass it's it, yeah <laughs> well thank you i mean i mean i i, I mean you didn't compliment it but i i hope you i hope it, i mean have you seen my chins no i just thought of one chin <laughs> oh, oh no maybe maybe i'm not slouching as much that was my yeah. question is is my slouching have to do with my diet and is there anything about the vegetarian you know and uh, vegetarianism that can help with my with posture, posture and yeah. and that kind of thing i'm glad you asked celery celery stands straight up if you if you put your <laughs> neck back and right. you stick a celery stalk down your throat like a like a cartoon almost <laughs> where you uh -huh. take it you put it in your mouth and you just push it down slowly <laughs> that helps with the back and and slouching is not good, especially when you're working the poles. You don't have if you're slouching, you like can't really like a stripper, like a stripper or when you're working the voting polls. OK, now I'm not saying anything about the voting polls. No, I mean, it's actually good that we volunteer for the polls this year. We we need all the help we can get we, to get yeah, certainly. a lot of people we need, out. Yeah, we need the elderly who usually work them to not be as... Exactly. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we want, we want people who... We want the people who... Scott, hurry up and think of a question because he's about to do the thing. Yeah, um, um, so... We want the people who... We want the people who... Are all, are are all, are, are all vegetables uh, green? <laughs> all vegetables are not green. Some vegetables are white. Cauliflower, okay. Kyle, you had mentioned that you had... Uh, Cauliflower! Yeah, it is a yeah. white vegetable. You're right. Yes. You mentioned you had one once. Yes. Um, are, uh, when you say, uh, you know, hey, I want to stand up straight, uh, uh, so eat some celery because celery is straight. Does your body become like any vegetable that you eat? Your body becomes like celery when you when you stick it down your throat like that, like like so. By the way, you keep demonstrating <laughs> what it's like to stick something that long down your throat, and I really I just wanted to highlight it for the listeners out there who can't exactly see what you're doing. Yeah, they can. Well, they can they can feel me, listeners. Listen to this when you do something <laughs> like this, and you do it like that, <laughs> and you gag on it like that. <laughs> Don't gag on it. Just keep shoving it down just keep okay. shoving it down do you do you uh uh do you think chewing is unnecessary for uh vegetables yeah you're supposed to boil them till they get so soft that you don't have to chew them you just kind of mush them in your mouth you're basically talking about baby food who is 
<laughs> you are. <laughs> I think there's a there's an Arianism. There's a there's an ism for food that I think is just that where you don't chew. Did you say Arianism? Well, yeah. Then I change it to ism because it's uh, uh, Arianism <laughs> does not sound, sound good, right. No. <laughs> uh, an ism about that is just. Well, there was the one movement of chewing your 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 kids' food and then spitting it into their mouth. Yeah, baby birding, birding it. Baby birding yeah. is, is that what it's called? <laughs> and I think like the, I, there's also one that is just about soft foods that you don't chew because the chewing and the ruining of your teeth, and you just basically shoot liquefied food into your into your face. You only get two sets of teeth in your lifetime, mm-hmm. and one of them goes away when you're very, very young, and then you're stuck with the rest for, for decades if you're lucky. If you raise your children to be vegetarian, they keep both sets of teeth. Both? What do you need with both? I mean, you have the you have like the baby ones and the adult ones at the same the time. The baby ones and the adult ones. The baby the adult ones grow around the baby ones. Mm. So so you look like a shark essentially with all the yes. uh, multiple rows, of, rows teeth. of teeth? Yes. You look this like a shark. Incredible. Really? So how many how many teeth do you have? Uh eighty three. Do you have eighty that's more than do you Two grow another set if you do it long enough? I kept all my wisdom teeth, and I'm very smart. Oh, okay. Interesting. So you, you're you like the next step in human evolution. Next step. But I'll tell you who's a step right now. Oh. Kanye West. Oh, no. Okay. Now, he's I, not I, officially on the ballot in most places yet, right? I mean, we yeah, have to get him people- on there, Kyle. And if you endorse him right now, Kyle, wake up and endorse Kanye West. I, I thought you might mention like some 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 club that I could be a part of. Like or I, I get free green juices sent to me or something. You could join the meatheads. We're a club. <laughs> what 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 do the meatheads do? We ride motorcycles. <laughs> okay. How often do you get together? Every Thursday night at seven. PM. Every Thursday night yes. at seven, you ride motorcycles yes. in the dark. Rome, that's, dangerous. that's that's when it's fun. We turn the lights off and we go. <laughs> that's when it's fun. I think we, you turn the lights off. Well, first of all, do you would you like me to go through how a meathead? meeting goes i definitely would it sounds to me like you meet at seven on yes, thursday nights. we meet at seven on thursday nights we all pull up on our motorcycles well pull up where though like where's the meeting place is it the same place every week yeah the vfw and do you always call it meeting but with an a yes yeah. it's or called are the- you the meatheads m-e-e-t-t <laughs> <laughs> because they just meet all that yeah there's nothing to do with food it's just they love meeting <laughs> that what here's the the fun part the meeting, oh boy. <laughs> we are called the meatheads, the M-E-E-T heads. Right. But the meeting is called the M-E-A-T-I-N-T. Oh, uh, okay. That's the fun Crazy. part. Come on, Kyle. You know you want to join. And you go to the meeting room, M-E-T-E-I-N-G, where you meet things out. Yes. Okay. Kyle gets so, it. Scott, keep I, up. I, 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 I definitely need to catch up. So you meet at the VFW at 7 o'clock. Is yes. it a, hey, we everyone needs to be there at 7? Or at 7, do people start rolling in and it takes about a half hour for people to get there? Everybody needs to be there at 7. The meeting, the minutes start going at 7 o'clock. <laughs> And well, yeah, the minutes are always going. <laughs> 701, 702, 703. What's the minutes, your, are you, what's your um, role in the, in the meathead? Uh, yeah, are you president? Are you secretary? Are you treasurer? I'm just a member. Oh, also a client. I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to get a, I'm just a poor boy. I don't, I need no sympathy though. I just, hmm. I just come to the meeting. When asked if I'm president, I say, aye, aye. Hmm. When I'm asked what sound a horse makes, I say, nay, nay. <laughs> <laughs> is Nene Leaks, would she be a good meathead? Uh, Nene is Leaks. free on sevens? Nene yeah. Leaks. On free on Thursdays? Nene oh, okay. is a basketball player. Nene is a basketball player. Mm-hmm. Who does Nene play for? The Houston Rockets. Oh, okay. Very good. So it sounds to me like uh, you've taken us through approximately one minute of the Meatheads oh, yes. agenda. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> you guys meet, you, you meet. take role. We take role as we're walking in. We take now, role. Now, are these roles aye, like aye. dinner roles? We take dinner roles as we're walking in. We take them. Somebody has a basket and tongs because of coronavirus. Take us past the past the 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 the, the first you know part of the meeting. What okay. do you guys do? We then physically kick out all of the veterans. Oh, from the VFW. <laughs> yes. What's usually going on there at Thursdays at seven? They're having they're having some dumb veteran meeting, but we don't respect <laughs> the troops. <laughs> so, okay. Aggressively, don't support the troops. Yeah. So so you go in and it seems like. They would have learned their lesson by now if they're constantly being <laughs> thrown out. On well, Thursday they keep nights. trying to get us to not have our meetings there. Sure. But but you guys just throw them out every single week. How do, do, Are you ever unsuccessful 
at throwing them out or every single week they get thrown out? Every single week they get thrown out. They're just not strong enough. They're old. They're old. Everybody's, all of us are meatheads. We're <laughs> strong people. A lot of protein, except me, I'm vegetarian. <laughs> Where do you get your protein? Beans? Beans, lentils. I tried to say that earlier, but you kept talking about Kanye West. <laughs> I never talked about Kanye West. You're the guy who talks about Kanye West. Well, since you want to bring him up. Well, look, I, I could talk to you about these meetings all night because they just sound fascinating, but uh, we do have to take a break. Um, can you stick around though? Because I would love to hear uh, any other details about these. Oh, the, what time uh, the is it? Heads. Is it almost seven? Because that's if it's oh. almost seven, I got to get out of here. No, you do. You how long does it take you to get to the meeting? Uh, Forty five minutes. It's a long. Forty five minutes. No, it's a long yeah, ride. I'll, I'll let you know when it's uh six uh ten. So okay. that'll give you a good five minute uh, uh leeway there. Perfect. Um, we have to take a break. When we come back, we're gonna have a marketer. Uh, and we will have more Jerome Buckethat and uh, more Kyle Bornheimer. We'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we are back. We have uh, Kyle Bornheimer of Avenue 5. Why is it called Avenue 5, by the way? I still haven't been able to figure that out. That's the name of the cruise ship. Mm. And um, yeah. They didn't name Gilligan's Island after the the minnow. No. You know what I mean? Like, if I would have ter- turned on the minnow, you know, I would be very confused if I was watching Gilligan's Island. Are you confused at the Avenue 5 title? Yeah, I am. Maybe we'll change the title for season two. Seriously, I think it would be great. Let's spitball some titles, like Space Guys. Sp- I think space with a Z. Yes. <laughs> In space, yeah. yeah. S-P-A-Z-E. Space Guys. <laughs> space Guys. Um, also, we have a Jerome Bacathat. Am I pronouncing I, that correctly? Yes, Bakethit. Bakethit, Bakethit. <laughs> well, why'd you say yes? It is so different. <laughs> it's also the third pronunciation we've had. Yeah. That's correct. Um, and uh, he's a vegetarian and uh, one of the uh, the meaty cheesy boys. What was it? The, the uh, meatheads. The meatheads, yeah. Do you the remember meaty, the meaty cheesy, cheesy boys. boys from Jack in the Box? <laughs> no. Oh, is that the boy van? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> cheese, cheese, meat. Cheese meat and that's it. <laughs> Baby, you know it's hot and juicy. They don't make it till you order it. When I say meat, you say cheese. Meat. Cheese. You meat. know, Scott, this is yes. another thing that we do at the meeting. For 15 minutes, we watch 80s commercials. <laughs> that's an 80s commercial? I'm just letting you know. Oh, you're letting train us know. Of, what? Just what? train of thought. Um, we do have to get to our next guest, though. She is a marketer. And uh, maybe she can, uh, uh, first of all, give Kyle some tips about how to uh, talk about Avenue 5. Uh, in a more exciting way, and uh, can also give uh, uh, Jerome Bucket that. Uh, That's some, correct. Some Bucket that. Bucket that. <laughs> uh, Jerome Bucket that is here, and uh, we do need to get to our next guest. Uh, she is a marketer. Please welcome Trish Maxwell. Hey, y'all. Thank y'all so much for having me. Um, oh, do I detect a southern lilt of your voice? Just a little bit. I, I work primarily on. Um, in the Midwest, but I, I I do have Southern roots. So where are you from? Um, South Carolina. South Carolina, and you you live in the Midwest though now. Yes. Yeah, so now I'm a marketer, and I work for TJ Maxx. Um, you may have oh. heard of it. That's the uh, that's the store with two X's in its name, right? Yes. So it's not triple exactly. X. It's but it's uh, a little it's double X. Yeah. And. Um, one of the biggest parts of um, my job is um, just to kind of work and figure out um, who that TJ Max girl is. Um, and so a lot of my job is understanding who she is, you know, I, I and I just have a ball doing that. Um, OK, so you you uh, are trying to lure uh, women into the store by saying that the clothes are for a certain type of person, in other words. Exactly. We, we want to understand our customer. And our TJ Maxx girl, you know, she is she's fun. She's spunky. She's smart. Um, you know, she she likes that that wedding font that you see on on wood, pieces of wood, that white wedding font. She likes those cardigans that are like robes that are floral print. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 back up here. She what likes font is, what? What font are we talking about? That white wedding font, that slanted, like kind of that font that's on everything. Verdana. Yeah, that one. <laughs> she loves that one. She loves it. She's. It's on everything she owns. All hmm. her pillows, her shirts, 
Um, you know, she, she might say rose all day, but she hasn't said it in a little while. Um, mm. I think she, she would order a pumpkin spice latte if her friends were ordering them, you know, but mostly it's, it's big headbands and, um, and I, I, I don't know. Um, I think the biggest thing though about her, is just the traumatic experience that she had in high school. Um, Oh, which I think, I think that separates her from say a Marshall's girl or um, a Ross girl or something. Well, I, I dare I ask what, uh, what is the specific traumatic event that you think the TJ Maxx girl under underwent? So um, our TJ Maxx girl, she um, woke up one morning and she got on her razor scooter and she went to school. And when she got there, (laughs) It, it just reeked of skunk. The whole school smelled like skunk. And so she's like, I don't understand. She goes to assembly and her friends turn to her and they go, Oh my God, it's you. It's you. (laughs) And she says, what? And they say, "It, it, you smell like skunk. So she runs to the school bathroom and she's, you know, she's taking the, the pink soap. And she's putting it all over her body, you know, trying to get rid of that smell and nothing works. And she's panicking. And so she just runs out of the school. She gets back on her scooter. She goes home. She gets up to her room and she sees all these little paw prints over by her window. And she realizes that she had left her window open and a skunk had climbed in there. And she goes downstairs and she hears little crying noises. Cry, cry, cry. She sees it's her mom. Her mom is crying. <laughs> she says, Mom, why are you crying? Why are you crying? She's like, oh, honey, I was at work cutting hair. And the women said that I smelled like skunk. And I lost my job. I'm sorry. I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Our poor TJ Maxx girl, you know, seeing that what her mom was going through. Her mom lost her job and it's her fault. Our TJ Maxx girl's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And and that's when she's like, I I need to go, mom. I need to go. Go? Go, go, go where? She out of the house. She needs to she needs to help her mom. Oh, out out of the house. She needs to find that skunk. That'll help her mom finding the skunk. What to what end? Revenge. Revenge. She needs to kill that skunk. Oh, and that'll help her mom get her job back, or just help with closure. It'll help her. It'll help with both. Okay. And her mom says, "Go, go kill that skunk." Okay. <laughs> so so she- has she filled her mom in on the fact that the skunk came in through her window? So like. Did she say I'm culpable? Yes, it's she my did responsibility. say that. Did I leave and that out? You did leave that part out. Well, yeah. did it come in? Did the skunk open the window itself? Do we? Did, did the girl know if it was her fault? Or the TJ Maxx girl knew it was her fault because okay. she left that window open. Why? W- okay. Why did she leave the window open? Was she like smoking a cigarette and she didn't want her mom to know that she was smoking? Or she was just hot and she wanted a breeze. <laughs> <laughs> Had she been told to be careful of of critters coming in? Did she know there was a possibility? Um, yeah, she. And sorry, I'm getting emotional too. So I, I, I'm. It's I'm, an emotional story. It really is. Um, was this the first day they lived in this house, and there was no way to know <laughs> that a critter could come in through the window like this? I, you know, I don't. I'm gonna have to check in with with um, headquarters on that. But mm, okay. okay, I think from what I can tell, you know, she was. She did not realize that that was going to be as big a risk as it was. And I don't think she realized leaving that window open was going to cost her mom her job. So she goes, she runs out of the house and she's on the, she has her shoes that have the little wheels on the bottom of them. Wheelie shoes. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do they call those? The rollies or skates? (laughs) Skates. Oh, okay. No, no, you're thinking (laughs) of just roller skates. (laughs) With a G and two S's. Skates guys? (laughs) <laughs> they're not roller skates these are the these are the ones are, with the hidden, exactly. hidden wheels they're shoes you can activate if you if you tilt your shoe a certain way right 
So yeah. she gets on those and she she rides away and bam. what happened to her razor scooter? She she left it on the lawn. She was so overwhelmed. Oh, okay. She was also like, I need to go real fast. So well, she had a backup. She had these <laughs> wheelie shoes on. She had her wheelie shoes. Yeah. And she sees her um her boyfriend's truck has crashed into a tree. Oh. And she goes running over to him and he's covered in blood. And he's like, is that my TJ Maxx girl? And she's like, it's me. Are you okay? <laughs> he's like, he's like, no, I, I was driving and I saw this skunk in the middle of the road and I didn't want to hit it because I know how much you care about animal rights. <laughs> and she's like, I do care about animals. And he's and so. Are you saying animals? <laughs> So she's like, she's like, well, you should have just hit that, that little animal. I, I don't care. And he said, well, I would never do that. I know, I know how serious you are about animal rights. And then all of a sudden she, she sees it. She the, sees the, the skunk, the skunk. Whoa. And she grabs, she grabs a, the gun out of her. Boyfriend's glove box. He, he was carrying? Yeah. <laughs> South Carolina. Permitted? Is he, is he a veteran? <laughs> he's just he's Because just he a can't young be man. at the VFW at seven if he is. Yeah. <laughs> he's just a man with a gun. A young just, man with a gun. A good guy with a gun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good guy with a gun. Very good guy. Good guy with multiple guns, but just had his one with him that day. Okay. Okay. And this is in the glove compartment or he's... It's on his hip or? It's in the glove compartment. Hmm. Okay. Hidden. But he has a holster. But it, he just, when he drives, he puts it in the glove box because it's uncomfortable. Sure. Okay. So she grabs it. She knew it was in there. So she grabs it and she turns to the skunk and she says, don't move, Aminal. And bam, <laughs> bam, bam. She Three shoots, shots. She shoots the skunk dead. And does, then, she, does she hit it with all three shots or did she miss with two and hit with one or she hit with two? Well, that's I mean, those are that's a pretty good. Uh, She'd been ratio. practicing. Our TJ mm. Maxx girl had been practicing. Mm. And that's when um, she saw it in the little squirrel's paw. TJ Maxx gift card. <gasps> what? Yeah. Twist. Twist. The squirrel had been trying to get, I mean, the skunk had been trying to get, had been trying to give her that card the whole time. That's why the squirrel, I mean, skunk <laughs> went into the house in the first place is to try to give her yep. a TJ Maxx gift card. To hand it over. How did that make the TJ Maxx girl feel? She was devastated. She thought that he was a foe, but really he was a friend. Wow. And it messed her up so bad. <laughs> what happened to her? Yeah. After that, did the mom get the job back or? No, none of it worked. None of it helped. None of it helped. What happened to the mom? Did she just, was that the end of her life or? Well, <laughs> the DJ Max girl just needed to provide for her. Oh, so what did she end up doing? So she moves to the big city, okay. you know, New York <laughs> City to start sure. anew, get away from that town. Get away from that energy. To, she still has to provide for her mother, though. So she's... she sends checks home. Okay. And then one night, she hears at the at the window. Whoa! Now in New York, that would be like rats or something. It was a skunk. The same. The the. I thought the skunk was dead. He said, "I am the previous skunk's brother." Whoa! Identical. Twin? Identical twin. Amazing. And he's talking? <laughs> they, yes, they talk. I, I guess I, I've skipped over the whole really amazing part of it. <laughs> I thought the twin part was amazing, but the, the fact that the skunk is talking. And, and then, bam, bam, she shoots him dead. Why? She was so guilty about the fear. other one. It was fear. fear. Well, New York is a scary city. I don't know if... Uh, uh, Kyle or Jerome, if you've ever been to New York City, but uh, 
You're constantly on edge there. I ride my motorcycle around New York all the time with, you know, my with lights, lights off, off, head on oh. fire. <laughs> Head on fire? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. No, she just, has just, to continue her thing. No, no, no. Head hold on. on fire. I think, I think you may have just admitted you're a ghost rider. <laughs> no. Are you a ghost rider? Is that what, is this a meeting of a bunch of ghost riders? Yes, we are ghost riders. Wow. We all died in a motorcycle accident. <laughs> and then sold your wow. souls to yes. Satan? Yes, to stay alive and keep having our meeting. <laughs> So and why do you, Kanye for president? Yeah, why do you want Kanye? Wow. Because <laughs> is he a ghostwriter? <laughs> no, Kanye is not a ghostwriter, but that's who the devil is endorsing, and unfortunately, oh, okay. I have to do it with him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this all now it's understandable. Way. I get yeah. it. I get it. Uh, totally. Also, I'm being punished right now. I can't have any more red meat. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry for judging you now. I I, I feel like you're, is you're, that you're what you were doing the whole time when your eyes I were was closed? Totally <laughs> <laughs> but you were under a lot of pressure that I should have been more sympathetic to. Come on, Kyle. Well, so, <laughs> well Trish, yeah, this is uh, what, what I mean. Uh, you, I just wanted y'all to get a window into the TJ Maxx girl. Well, so we now got you that know with that harrowing detail. Uh, can I ask a question about the TJ Maxx girl? This story that you told is 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 this something that happened to you? Yeah, I, it's funny that. That you think that, um, yeah, I, I actually am the TJ Maxx girl. I thought so. We're like two mirrors here, letting you know that the TJ Maxx girl is you. I'm one of the mirrors, in case you weren't didn't yeah, see earlier. I'm, I, I wasn't. Tra- I actually had, didn't see you this whole time because you're so low. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm trying <laughs> it's to really eat more an unhelpful for that. mirror. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's I, he's I, been I, trying to shove a celery stalk down his throat for the I'm last. Failing as both a guest and. <laughs> A mirror. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, I mean, that's a terrible story, but I don't know that it's applicable to every single person who shops at TJ Maxx. I think it absolutely is. Uh, I think everyone has had trauma. Everyone has gone through something with a terrible aminal. And <laughs> there, so people, when they go into TJ Maxx and they think, oh, well, maybe I should buy this, um, you know, this big comforter that says peace in that font. <laughs> That we were just talking about. Verdana. When they buy a comforter that says that or some, some matching pillows that say our nest, you know, mm-hmm. they're thinking about, oh, when I was attacked by that aminal, um, <laughs> I could have died. And thankfully, I made it through that. And now it's time to spend money at TJ Maxx. Okay. Well, I guess that makes sense. By the way, so when she, when the TJ Maxx girl, she, sh- she shoots the brother. Sure. Brother Skunk, she sees in his little fanny pack two DJ Max cards. <laughs> two DJ Max cards in his fanny pack. Two. Okay. Well, look, <laughs> we have to take a break if that's okay. Uh, I want to. I want to really drill down on this uh, uh, when we come back, and then uh, also Jerome mm-hmm. uh, Bukathat. Yeah, that's correct, Bukathat. I, I. I mean, we have barely scratched the surface of you being a ghostwriter. <laughs> And Kyle, if you're a ghostwriter, I need to know right now because we cannot have any mid-show twists like this again. I think that's that's actually what I play in Lovebirds. Now that now now oh, I'm remembering, that's okay. what I do in Lovebirds. That's what it is. You're wearing the ghostwriter mask. Okay, yeah. we're going to take a break. We will come right back with Kyle Bornheimer, Trish Maxwell, and Jerome Bukathat. We'll be right back with more comedy bang bang after this. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we are back. Uh, we have Kyle Bornheimer of Avenue 5 and uh, The Lovebirds and uh, spinoff of The Lovebirds, your character maybe in his own movie. I mean, he could hang out with someone funny too. I'm filming it right now. This, That's what this is. That's what this is. Oh, we're all yeah. in. We're all in it. Amazing. We're all number one on the call sheet in this one. Oh, I love that. Sharon, number one. We also have Trish Maxwell. She is a marketer for TJ Maxx. Yeah. Hello. No, we said hello to you before. You don't need to say hello every time I mention you. Hello. Thank you for having me. My my pleasure. Um, And then uh, we also have Jerome Bukathat. That's correct. Who who, uh, billed himself as a vegetarian, but should have billed himself as a ghostwriter. Because I think, personally, that's the most interesting thing about you, although you may be wanting to get away from that. Are you saying that vegetarians are not interesting people? Well, I mean, you came on the show and you seem more like a Kanye West supporter than you sounded like a vegetarian. And then I come to find out that all of these meetups that you have, these meetings, 
with the 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 meaty boys. What are you? The meaties? The meatheads. The meatheads. Also, I wanted to say that we buy our frames when we give out our uh, awards. Our superlatives, we buy our frames at TJ Maxx. Blessings. Good to know. Good to know. But again, not the most interesting thing about you. I mean, uh, the meatheads, you should be called like the local chapter of the Ghost Riders because you're, you're riding around heads on fire with all your lights off. We're not allowed to say that at the VFW. Because I, I mean, I can't, I can only imagine that these, these veterans are being kicked out because you're all a supernatural presence. Yeah, but then they come back at <laughs> A45 with guns. And Is that with guns? That's, that's the one thing that can Why get don't us. they come with guns? <laughs> if they know a bunch of ghost riders are going to be interrupting it's, their It's meeting. about respect. <laughs> you want to meet at an even playing field? Yeah. But, you, but you, all you ghost riders have like these long chains that you like swing around. They're all like fiery. and Don't you? I mean, We don't come with those. Not to the meatheads, not to the meeting. What do you come with? Our brains, ourselves, our 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 energy, our time where we're ready to display a new commercial to the group. We're ready, ready to mm. uh, give out a superlative that we've nicely framed with the TG Mac, TJ Maxx brand frame. Have you ever uh, won one of these superlatives? I have. What have you won? Best vegetarian. <laughs> but you're the only one. I'm the best at it. I won Forever Young at Heart. So. Oh, you did. It's uh, I you know I I have to say Trish, you don't seem young at heart. You seem like you aged in, <laughs> in the trauma that occurred in your life. You suddenly had to grow up very very fast. This was before the skunk incident. Oh, how many days before? A week. 7 days before. Yeah. And you were forever young at heart and then suddenly that tragedy happened. I'll never be the same. I'm yeah. sorry. Did you tear up the uh, award? No, I kept it. I, I actually framed it in a TJ Maxx frame. And every year I go and I put it on the graves of the little the skunks. <laughs> and then you take it back. <laughs> and then I take a picture. And then I take it back. <laughs> oh, okay. And then I frame the picture. Seems like one picture would do it. No, every year. You don't year. need to constantly be taking a note. Like, is anything changing? Just, I would imagine more <laughs> graves popping up next to it. There's more weed, weeds and, yeah, more graves. More skunk graves. You know, I, don't, I don't mean to be a Bornheimer bummer, but <laughs> are you ever afraid that the child of one of the, either the brother or the brother's brother is is kind of laying for you and, and kind of laying to, and waiting. I mean, this to, is kind of like the origin of Batman, but it could yeah. be, you know, skunk man where yeah. basically skunk man saw his parents murdered in, in this case, it's the identical twin fathers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, you know, says that criminals are a superstitious and cowardly lot, and then uh, vows to become a, a skunk. I want to say every day I'm scared of that. Every day I know that one of their youngsters is coming for me and someday I'm going to turn, I'm going to see an aminal and it's going to kill me. And I still fight for aminal rights despite all of that. And I love, I do love skunks and I do love TJ Maxx. Um, and so pray for me, I guess, is what I, why I'm here to get all your listeners to pray for me. I would think that someone who is so afraid of skunks wouldn't have a, a, a stuffed skunk right behind you like that. I mean, it's so weird that you're displaying a, a stuffed skunk right behind you. Oh, wait, oh. Is, that a, is that a stuffed skunk? Oh, my God. There's been a skunk. I didn't know like, that that was there. Right behind you this entire time. I just assumed it was part I of do? the story. What do I do? Is th this is not your skunk. This is not your, this is not a stuffed, this is a live Bam! skunk. Bam! Bam! Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Oh my God! It's still moving. Bam, bam, bam. Why are you Don't saying you, bam while you're shooting? Don't you ever come back, you animal? I have a superlative for you, <laughs> best skunk killer. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you've killed. I've killed zero skunks in my life, and you've killed one before my very eyes. And then, if your tale is to be believed, two previous. Oh my gosh, y'all. <laughs> You guys won't believe this. I just found in his jean pocket <laughs> four TJ Maxx cards. 
Seems oh, for like, one for each of us? Yeah. It seems like these are doubling each time. <laughs> I thought that you were just adding one, but it seems like they're actually doubling. So next time you kill a skunk, it'll be eight, then 16, then 32, then 64, 128. I mean, we're that's $400 for us to use at TJ. In any way okay. we want, we could get. How do you want to? Sp- how do you? How do we want to split this up? I mean, we all are sharing number one on the call sheet, so it seems like it would be equal. Or you know, maybe I get more just because you know uh, no. I brought you all together. No, oh no. Or we get maybe it's four hundred <laughs> split three ways because I'm assuming you have like an employee discount. Yeah, yeah, that would. That no, be they don't yeah. give me any perks. I don't even get a meal. You know. Do you officially work for <laughs> they them? They don't serve food. <laughs> Why would they give you a meal? I don't even get get a staff meal. It's just tragic. You know, you can buy white chocolate covered pretzels at Uh, TJ Maxx. Yeah, you can buy uh, popcorn. Most uh, of the food, yeah, in novelty tins though. Chips, yeah. It's very old food that's been in cans or, or plastic for a long time. Stuff that keeps. You're not doing your job as a marketer right now. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> you sound disgusting. <laughs> but for me, you guys, I just want to go to TJ and I want them to cook us a pasta meal before I start. They don't <laughs> cook things there. But that's what they should do. That's what all companies should do. Give you a staff meal. You know, like they do at restaurants. This is what happens in restaurants. Yes, it seems like you've worked in restaurants more than you've worked at. I mean, in show business, we get meals, so she might be on it. I mean, there could be more companies that feed their employees. Absolutely, especially for a big company that's you know taking advantage of its workers all the time, like TJ Maxx. They should absolutely. They take advantage of you. Well, they don't pay everyone very well, and you don't get benefits. What do you think you should be paid and what do you actually get paid? I get I make ten thousand for every four years that I work there. And I haven't I haven't made it to my four year cut, so I don't get the money. You only make twenty five hundred dollars a year? Wow. Yes. So that's why I'm just saying that's I not don't good. I don't want to eat canned popcorn. I would love a pasta meal. I got to say, Jerome Bukathat, that sounds kind of criminal. It sounds like something that maybe the spirit of vengeance would take upon itself to to right a wrong here. Uh, are they playing any commercials that you don't like? Perhaps because that's when we could come. That's when we could come in. And- you, wait a minute. You're just the ghostwriter division that covers commercials that people don't like. Yeah, basically 80s commercials that don't bring positive nostalgia. Is anything like that happening, Trish? I don't know. It sounds so specific, but then again, you've been the queen of specifics at this point. We're not the only dead people, Scott. Well, not every dead person is a ghostwriter. Wait, or are they? Yes, they are. Are you crazy? Yes. Do you have any dead relatives? Uh, What a wonderful question to bring up. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) <laughs> Shall I name them all? <laughs> and then he'll tell you if there's ghost if they're ghostwriters. If they became ghostwriters <laughs> yes. afterwards. Somebody old that you don't really care about. Not somebody that really made you. Well done game. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that this is real. Everyone think of their least loved dead loved one. <laughs> and then name them publicly. And then name them publicly. Well, <laughs> well they won't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did your mom make it, Trish? Did she? Or no, uh, no, she, she's she's gone. Uh, even though you were sending checks back, I mean the checks weren't very big. <laughs> the checks only... were too small. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm I have the police looking. There's an investigation. Well, it's the FBI now. The FBI is looking into oh, her death. Went federal. Because, yeah, because they don't know how she died. Well, that and, doesn't automatically make it a federal <laughs> case if just if there's people there. haven't solved it. <laughs> Her whole body was covered in little paw prints. Okay, again, not and federal. Sounds stunk, like a local crime. Stunk like crazy sure. in the house. Sure, this sounds like a sounds like a skunk. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> and we all said, "Who could have done something like this?" Right. Not sure why the the federal government got involved. Go ahead. So I, <laughs> I called up uh, the FBI, and okay. I said, "This is my history with aminals. Do you think that there is any connection?" And they said, well, we're going to look into it. Was was this person in the FBI chuckling or laughing as they hung up the phone? 
Um, it, there was a lot of snort sounds, <laughs> but I knew I'd gotten through. So Amazing. the answer is she didn't make it. So is she with the Ghost Riders? Yeah. Is uh, have you ever seen what? What was your mom's name, Trish? Um, her name was Mish. <laughs> Mish. Big Mish. Mish. Do you know Mish? <laughs> I do know Mish. She's with us. <gasps> Miss okay. brings be, she brings lovely tea cakes to every meeting. I unfortunately can't have any right now. Why is that? Oh, wait, what's all, wrong with all, tea cakes? They always have meat in them. She oh. makes a mean meat ca- meat tea cake. Meat tea cake. <laughs> so <laughs> Not Mish, tea, what tea sandwiches? <laughs> has she ever mentioned Trish here? Like, uh, do you have any message that Mish? Could uh, you want to pass on to Trish over here for her dear departed or, I guess, least favorite relative? You know, come <laughs> to think of it, she always, every time she presents people with tea sandwiches, she always goes and enjoy this. Eat this good because some people are ungrateful. And I go, Whoa. what is that about? What is that all about? <laughs> you weird as hell, hell, Mish. That rings true for me. You a weird ass Mish. Because she actually, you know, she calls those... Weird-ass she, Mish. <laughs> I was always like, Mish, please. I can't. <laughs> but she, she would try to get me to eat those little tea cakes that were full of meat. And I, stupidly, I turned them down. And now I would kill for one because I'm starving. And TJ Maxx, if they tried well, I thought it was going to be about reconnecting with your mother. <laughs> You're just starving. <laughs> Well, I uh, gosh, I, I guess there's no uh, crime to for you to avenge, uh, Jerome Bukithat. Um, That's correct, Bukithat. Buk- Bukithat, and uh, no crime for you to avenge, Kyle. I know uh, you were talking about the Equalizer earlier. Uh, you could, uh, you know, sounds like you're interested in maybe righting some wrongs out there. Uh, I wanted to, but I, I'm so slouched in this chair. I don't think I could get up to to avenge anything. Yeah, it's, right. it's almost night night time for you. You, uh, your son, <laughs> I might just stay in this closet. And your just son go is right just going to gonna find you in the morning, <laughs> passed out in his closet. Oh no, Dad's here again. Dad's doing another podcast. <laughs> Well, look, guys, this is uh, uh, a sad tale for all involved, although uh, Jerome Bukathat, you seem generally happy about everything, including beating <laughs> up veterans. And- Absolutely. <laughs> and, but uh, we're running out of time. We just have time for one final feature on the show, and that's a little something called plugs. Scott said we should write some plug songs that aren't about plugs. This isn't about plugs. Scott can't tell me what to do, though. Scott is not my dad. Scott Telling me what to do, Dad. Oops, I think I meant to say, Scott. Scott, I don't think that you are my dad. Don't tell me to do stuff. This isn't about love. Oh, yeah, that was Scott is Not My Dad by Sister City. Thanks to Sister City for that wonderful plugs theme. Um, all right, uh, Kyle, what are we plugging? It sounds like you have two uh, projects that are still streamable that are not in the too distant rear view. Let's go with uh, plugging those. Sure. Avenue 5 and the Lovebirds. Um, yeah, they're both anything else. Any Anything else that there people There probably can, is. There isn't there. It seems like you've um, worked a lot. It seems like there'd be something. Oh, what if, what else is out there? Um, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Um, sure. You know, I, I I pop up as as Teddy on on Brooklyn Nine Nine from time to time. Wonderful. Um, and uh, uh, Jerome Bukathat. What are uh, uh, spelled Bucket Hat? If anyone is looking, if anyone has need of a, the services of a ghost writer who only writes the wrongs of eighties television commercials. Yes. Anything you want to plug? Yeah, I'd like to plug. Uh, Kanye West in 2020. Okay, it's not going to happen. Uh-huh. I mean, he. I mean, what I mean to say is, is he's he's not even on the ballot. He's never going to make it into the presidency. I mean, the other thing might happen, but tomato potato. <laughs> let's call the whole thing on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that how you guys end every meeting? Yeah. At, we at say that. Heads? We now say let's that. ride with our lights off and our skulls ablaze. <laughs> we also end every meeting by watching, by listening to the flagrant ones on Patreon hosted by Carl Tart Hayes Davenport and Sean Clements of Hollywood handbook fame. Hmm. And, uh, do they yeah, drop the act on that show? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I mean the whole their whole deal, you know what I mean? Their whole stick. Do they drop it on that show and are they just themselves? You know, I still can't tell. <laughs> I uh 
Also, yeah, watch Brooklyn Nine Nine season five. We plug in that. <laughs> sure. Why? Why that season in particular? I had a friend who wrote on it. Oh, okay. Um, Trish Maxwell, anything to plug? I'm just a, a one pillow at TJ Maxx. Um, that's in that that beautiful font, that wedding font, mm. and it says L I L Y. Y L Y L Y L I L Y L Y L Y L Y I L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L Y L at, you it's know, like a body of all pillow. your other pillows. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Body yeah. pillow. Okay, wonderful. I want to plug. Um, look, if you're a member of the Television Academy, and you know a lot of people in show business listen to this, uh, I, I believe voting for the uh, Emmys is up. Hey, Kyle, you going to vote for? Uh, are you a member of the uh, Television Academy? I don't think so. Oh, man, you're no good to me. All right. Well, uh, if you are a member, vote for Between Two Ferns. Uh, oh, okay. and, I'm uh, going to vote anyway. Okay, yeah, please do. <laughs> At least tell your neighbor. You live in show business land. I'm sure like your neighbors are in the television. <laughs> well, I'll shout academy. out the door. I'll say, if anyone's voting, do the one for the Ferns show. Please. Um, and while you're at it, go ahead and watch the Between Two Ferns movie. That's on Netflix. All right, let's close up the old plug bag. You start with a C when you want to close it up. You leave. With an L, and then you open up the plug bag. Open up the plug bag. Take your hands and open it up. Then Horatio comes in and he just says, Open up the plug bag. Okay, guys, I want to thank you so much, Kyle. Always great to see you. And, uh, you know, at this point, we are just seeing the top of your head and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and 14 chins. <laughs> um, Jerome Bukathat is correct. I told you I would give you a warning. It is six. 12 at this oh point. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, 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 no. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> oh my I god, your the skin melted off of your skull. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>